um, that is that that is it for the story slam people who are uh, up for being judged. <laughs> we have we have a special bonus in Martha Frankel who has put this whole thing together. Woo! Now Martha has been a volunteer fireman and an ambulance driver, and she has given mouth to mouth to two dead guys. Oh. <laughs> wow. I'm not in competition, you all know that. I mean, I'm in competition with a lot of things, but not today. Introduce yourself to the victim, the instructor intones. His voice is flat, nasal. Even if they're unconscious, maybe they can hear you. If you get a pulse but no response, yell for help. At that, the class collectively giggles. We live in the middle of nowhere. If we find an unconscious person, it's doubtful there will be bystanders. <laughs> Assess the danger level. Push aside anything that might prove to be a hazard. It's these last words that will make all the difference later on, although not in the way the nasal teacher hopes. You have to think quick but remain calm. You're not looking to be a hero just to have a good outcome. <laughs> He shows us how to assess if the victim is breathing, how to tell the difference between breath and gurgling, how to find the carotid ar artery. There's talk of rescue breaths and pulse taking, of pinching off the victim's nose and covering their mouth with your own, after you have cleared their airways of vomit. <laughs> I start to hum in my head. I basically stop listening. I imagine myself saving a beloved teacher in front of the whole school, or lifting a car off a baby while the mother weeps with joy. That happens, you know. In a perfect world, the teacher would have assessed that I was not a good candidate for this type of work. But I got my CPR certification anyway. A few days later, I was at Yankee Stadium for a game between the Yankees and the Kansas City Royals. I was with two friends and we got ourselves settled into our lower level right field seats. Second row, we could pra practically touch Reggie. In fact, that's what we yelled over and over, louder and louder. Hey, Reggie, over here, baby, come on, come on over here and give us a kiss, Reggie, come on. <coughs> Reggie was good natured, he tipped his hat to us. In the fifth inning, he tossed me the ball, which I caught, but when the nice Hispanic man in front of us motioned with his head towards his young son, I reluctantly handed the ball to the kid. Everyone in my section cheered. I waved like I was on a float. <laughs> I felt so good. And so, when that nice Hispanic man grabbed his chest and folded onto the ground, I reacted with the single-mindedness I had been trained for. In a split second, I decided that the little boy, who continued to talk to his father as if nothing was out of the ordinary, was definitely a hazard. I jumped between them and may have been a little rough when I pushed the hazard to the side. We can be heroes just for one day, goddammit, and this was my day. I grabbed for the man's nose, bypassing that pesky, assess the situation. I was just about to start mouth breathing when he started yelling and pushed me away. The kid was crying and he reached around me to lift and comfort him. It was then that I saw it his pack of camels lying on the floor. He had been reaching down for them. The people in my section looked at me aghast. My friends were doubled over with laughter. The man and his son scurried up the aisle and away from me. I had to put off being a hero for another day.